Hi, this is Simon Canlish, and welcome to another marvellous video. According to the Marvel Universe, when the Earth was formed, only a sentient life force inhabited the infant planet. This life force created the Elder Gods, the first among whom was Chthon. Although his name is derived from a Greek word meaning Earth or Earthly, it only represents the soil of the grave and the destruction that precedes it because Chthon is the very god of chaos and the master of chaos and dark magic. He's literally the first practitioner of dark magic and the author of the infamous dark hole that Wanda used in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. In this video, we will explore Chthon and dive deep into the Mighty Avengers issues 21 through 23. Three comics that describe the event when Chthon possessed one of the Avengers and walked on the face of the Earth. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, then please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Origin and Expulsion from Earth Several billion years ago, when no living being existed on Earth, our blue planet was the home of a sentient life force called the Demiurge. It was the very life force that would later drive the Earth's biosphere. Since the Demiurge was sentient, it seeded Earth with a race of superior beings called the Elder Gods, when the Earth was still very young. The very first of these Elder Gods was Chthon. Later, Chthon would have siblings named Oshter, who was the grey goddess of balance and power, Gaia, the biological mother of Thor, and Set, a serpent elder god who was the ultimate horror of reptilian development. These elder gods ruled the earth for several million years after their creation and proliferated. Chthon soon became fascinated by the dark and mystical forces of the universe and began studying them. Chthon later became Earth's first practitioner of black magic, but then beings with such great power often forget their responsibilities. And that's what happened with Set, when he realized that his powers could increase if he devoured his siblings. Soon, almost all the Elder Gods turned to cannibalism and degenerated into vicious demons. They would hunt each other for power. But a billion years ago, Gaia, the Elder God and mother of Thor, felt that this corruption needed to be ended. She feared for the safety of the variety of marine life forms that were developing in the hydrosphere, especially the oceans. She urged the sentient life force Demiurge to provide her a means to destroy these fallen and demonic elder gods. Demiurge granted her request, and she swam to the depths of the earth to give birth to the very first of an entirely new race of gods, or the new gods. The new god Atum was given birth by Gaia, and he traveled across earth in his quest to slay demons and absorb their powers. Over a period of time, Atum took the name Demagogue, the God Eater, and assumed a monstrous appearance. Chthon did not want to be devoured by Atum and knew that he had to escape Earth. He then created a new dimension itself called the Flickering Realms, also called Dark Heart of Chthon and the Dimension of the Darkhold. Chthon found himself in a slumber in his new realm, but he hoped to return back to Earth one day. Apart from Set Serpent Sea, the Flickering Realm became the second inner plane to exist close to Earth. However, before escaping here, Chthon went to a hidden chamber inside Mount Wondergore in Eastern Europe. In this place called the Dark Hold, Chthon wrote every last bit of his dark knowledge on indestructible pieces of scrolls. The final work is what people know as the Dark Hold the same book that Wanda used in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. He left the book in Mount Wondergore itself to serve as a tangible link between the flickering realm and Earth. The book would have helped him return to Earth should that ever become possible, but the flickering realms was not the only dimension that Chthon, the first black magician, created. Within the flickering realms, he created a dimension called the Dimension of the Nagare the father of werewolves and other creatures. Even though Chthon had retreated to his own realm and could not return for fear of Demigor, he continued interfering with Earth. It became imperative that the remaining Elder Gods stopped interfering with each other's realms, and a pact was signed. Gaia was given Earth, and Chthon stopped influencing Earth, or at least he stopped doing that directly. He would not return to Earth because of the fear of the Demigor, but he had created numerous demonic and evil races. Naturally, he would use these beings to continue interfering with Earth because they were not bound by the pact that the Elder Gods had once made. Chthon was the father of several horrific monsters, although such creatures were said to be creations instead of spawns or children. Amongst the 
older creations were the Nagare and the Ape Men. Furthermore, Cthon also created beings such as harpies, goblins, and the manbats of Ur Zanar. But his deadliest creation included the Wolfmen of Valusia. These can be said to be the first ever werewolves and the three wolf lords, namely Bloodhound, the Night Beast, and Wolf Demon, blanketed the world with terror. The invitation from humans. Around a hundred thousand years ago, the Darkhold found its way to the city of Atlantis, where a cult of Darkholders worshipped Cthone. Since the fallen Elder God was responsible for the creation of werewolves, it is not quite difficult to figure out who created the vampires. Yes, the Darkholders used the damned book and gave rise to the first ever vampire, including the vampire called Lord Varney, who also goes by names such as Lord of the Vampires, Vampire Prime, and Nosferatu Prime. Nevertheless, Cthone remained in the flickering realms for the next 1,000 years. But during medieval times, a woman named Morgan Le Fay, the half-sister of King Arthur, tried to invite Cthone to Earth. But she and her mystic cult members soon realized that Cthone was too powerful a force to control. Additionally, if Cthone chose to accept this invitation, he would not really break the oath that he'd taken in the past. It was more like a loophole that he had found. However, Morgan and her followers tried to send him back to the flickering realm and failed. Ultimately, they managed to bind him to Mount Wundagore. Additionally, one of Morgan's repentant followers named Magnus hid the Darkhold in the Cursed Mountain and cast a spell that would allow only good and noble people to enter. One could say that Magnus tried to ensure that no one used the book for evil purposes, but then again, what good would come of such a dark book? However, Morgan's nephew, a mystic named Modred, entered the place where the Darkhold was kept. He had intended to use the book for good, but that would be his final mistake. A manifestation of Cthone named the Other revealed itself to Modred and sought his soul, a request that Modred refused. But the mystic could not hold his ground when his wife followed him there. In the end, Modred sacrificed his soul to save his wife, and Cthone possessed Modred. But Modred could not leave the mountain and remained in a slumber. It was many years later that a possessed Modred rose once again, but he was sent back to his slumber by the Knight of Wondergore. Interestingly enough, this was the time when the story of Wanda, Marvel's uber-powerful witch, started. So just before Cthone was banished to his mountain slumber, he touched an infant Wanda in the hope that the little girl would grow up to serve as his future vessel. Possessing Wanda. It wasn't before long that the day finally came when Cthone as Modred rose again. Up until now, Modred had been trying to cast off the influence that Cthone had on him. But once Modred became weak, Cthone took complete control of his vessel. But that was not enough for Cthone. Modred captured Wanda and performed a ritual that allowed Cthone to possess Wanda and walk out of Mount Wondergore. As Cthone, Wanda first confronted the Avengers when they came to help her. I guess no good deed goes unpunished. She imprisoned the Earth's mightiest heroes in a mystical circle and began a ritual to begin Cthone to Earth as himself. But the plan was thwarted by the mutant beast, and Django Maximoff, the man who had adopted Wanda and Pietro or Quicksilver, crafted a doll in Wanda's image from Wongador's mystical wood, which acted as a conduit for his adoptive daughter's soul. Wanda's soul once again joined her body, but Cthone was trapped in the doll. He was forced to go into slumber again. Eventually, Cthone managed to contact Mordred through a dark old dwarf. The dwarf told him that he could have his soul back if he agreed to bring Cthone the soul of a good and noble woman from England. Modred agreed but did not realize that the soul was Cthone was seeking was once again that of Janice, Modred's wife. And once again, Modred offered himself to save his world, but she died anyway. And that brings us to a deep dive into the three Marvel comics that detail Cthone's entry to Earth. This was the first time in several hundred years that Cthone walked on Earth as himself. The smartest man in the room. The comic began with Cassie Lang or Stature and the vision of young Avengers at the ruins of once was the Avengers Mansion. Wiccan or the reincarnated son of the Scarlet Witch had sent some magical activity that could soon transform into a global threat. But at the Avengers Mansion, they find that somehow all the other members of the young Avengers have been turned to stone. And for some strange reason, the list of such victims is increasing across the globe. Vision takes Cassie and 
and flies away, but is shocked further to find the Scarlet Witch waiting for them. A flash of red light covers the sky, and they all disappear. A series of similar disasters have taken over the entire world. For instance, New York City was covered in tsunamis of blood. San Francisco found itself covered in solid amber. Philadelphia was getting ravaged by aggressive plant life, while Toronto found itself covered in flesh-eating insects. Even the desert of Arizona was covered in snow, and Wakanda was experiencing fiery rain. The reason why the Scarlet Witch disappeared with Cassie and Vision was that she had been trying to save as many heroes as she could. Among the other few heroes that she managed to save were Hulk and Iron Man. Tony concludes that the source of all this chaos is Mount Wondergore, and they must do something immediately. Meanwhile, while Hercules and Amadeus Joe ask Hank Pym to lead the Avengers, and after much to and fro, he agrees to the task. Pym now goes by the name Wasp and works with Jocasta, a robot that Ultron had created in hope of finding a mate. That's some next-level desperation, I must admit. I mean, just because he could not get himself a girlfriend, the crazy robot created one for himself. Anyway, Pym and Jocasta reach Transia through a portal where the Scarlet Witch was waiting for them, and it's not before long that the real reason behind the crisis comes to light. Modred had once again managed to conduct a ritual to bring Cthone to walk the face of Earth. This time he had grafted the text of the Darkhold on his own body, an act that gave him immense power. He now summoned Cthone, but the Elder God needed a new and faster host. The writing on the wall. In flashback, Quicksilver had learned about a piece of dark hole in the Vatican that was about to fall into the wrong hands. He races against time to get it before Modred. However, Quicksilver was late and Modred had already taken possession of the piece. Quicksilver does his best, but Modred vanishes into thin air. Too bad that Marvel's fastest man was not fast enough. Modred comes to Mount Wongador and kills the Knights of Wongador. Once upon a time, it was these very knights who had banished Cathon. Modred then enters the cavern called Darkhold and lures Quicksilver there. Unbeknown to Quicksilver, he had run into a trap. Modred easily captures the young superhero and offers him up to Cathon, who uses him as a vessel. Cthone, as Quicksilver notices the Avengers from afar, but he is at least concerned about them. I mean, what is there for an Elder God to fear from a bunch of mortal superheroes? Cthone describes Scarlet Witch as being someone who is still very much beneath him. He then goes on to lay out his nefarious plans and says, there is work to be done, a world to unravel, and a reality to destroy. Cthone then raced across the globe in Quicksilver's body. For one entire day, the Book of the Darkhold was read aloud, and the chaos Cascade spread across the earth. The grounds that Quicksilver touched were scarred, and the reality there was rewritten. He was transforming Earth into something in his own image, a world full of darkness death and destruction. However, Iron Man managed to figure out a pattern amidst all this chaos. Meanwhile, US Agent Pym, Vision, Hercules, and Statue arrive inside Mount Wongador's Darkhold and find Modred awaiting them. They find that the walls were inscribed in glowing letters and were not unknown to even Vision. But the inscription soon came to life in the form of resurrected Knights of Wondergall, who now serve Cthone. Sensing chaos at Wondergore, Cthone turns his attention there and begins his travel to the mountain. Meanwhile, Bova receives a written message from the Darkhold asking her to do something. So Bova was a bovine superhero from Mount Wongador who was helping Modred against her will. After receiving the message, he attempts to hot Modred, but he senses the incoming assault and thwarts it. However, it gives the Avengers enough time to cause a distraction. Iron Man arrives just in time to knock out Modred out of the cave, Bova speaks to the Darkhold and is revealed that the spell that brought Cthone into the mortal world had somehow trapped Quicksilver's soul inside the Darkhold. He asks her to bring the book to the Avengers because one of them may know a way that could release his soul from the book three words. Iron Man tells the others that most magical entities have some sort of weakness against iron and asks the others to bind Modred in iron after gagging him so that he won't cast any more spells. Bova then tells the team about the deal with Quicksilver's soul trapped inside the dark book. While they do not really have a plan for getting Quicksilver out of the book, Iron Man submisses that if they could take Cthone out, everything would snap back to normal and all the weird things happening around the world would also 
would snap out of existence. But it was Cthone we were talking about, and that guy would not go down easily, right? The team was about to be hit by what can only be described as a tidal wave of tentacles. As Iron Man, US agent, and Her Hercules begin destroying Mount Wondergore, believing it to be the very source of Cthone's powers, the Elder God appeared before them in Quicksilver's body, riding the said tidal wave of tentacles. Cthone was clearly not happy about his home being destroyed. Infidels, you would tear down my towering soul and crush my heart of stone. You will pay for this, you and all the sons and daughters of Earth. But Stark's plan was in itself a disaster because Mount Wongador was filled with volatile uranium and destroying the mountain could have led to unimaginable death and destruction. But Cthone continued to become stronger by harnessing his power from the chaos and fear he sowed in the heart of his victims. Willing to lap up their fear and dine on their screams, Cthone's powers seemed to increase beyond all limits. Hank Pym tried to stand his ground against the monster, but only meaningful defense came from Hulk, who smashed Cthone in one great punch. This gave enough time to Amadeus and Hank Pym to put the ant man helmet to good use. They scrambled the language center of Pietro Maximoff and rendered him incapable of speaking correctly. And naturally, Cthone was unable to make his vessel speak the right words to cast spells. The other heroes seized this opportunity to pummel the crap out of the Elder God. Noticing that Cthone was in trouble, Mordred began a ritual to offer himself as a new host for Cthone. Meanwhile, Vision and Amadea started to read the various things that Quicksilver Soul had written in the book. The result was that the text started to disappear and Darkhold started searching for its original writings. But Modred had earlier grafted these texts on his body, and the same texts had released Cthone in the first place. In the end, the book pulled both Modred and Cthone within itself, and in the blink of an eye, the world had returned to its normal state. What makes Cthone so deadly? Cthone is a being whose powers are simply incomprehensible. The most powerful villain we have seen in the MCU so far is Thanos. And believe me, Thanos is just a baby before Cthone. It only makes sense because this guy is literally the eldest of the first gods ever. He had such huge amounts of magical forces resting within himself and he manages to create a rift in the earthly plane and created a whole other dimension so that he could escape from his god killer nephew. Within this realm, he serves as the omnipotent being who controls all of the aspects of reality and is also the master of chaos magic. The magic that's considered the evilest and most destructive of all forms of magic. We all remember Dormammu, right? The big bad arch enemy of Doctor Strange. Well, even Dormammu invokes Cthone whenever he feels the urge to plunge Earth into eternal darkness. If that's not showing off demonic might, I don't know what is. And we had already discussed the several disasters he brought upon Earth, including the River of Blood, creating and activating volcanoes, boiling an entire sea, sending Midgard to an other dimensional prison, and yes, covering an entire desert with snow. Even Thor says that someone who could send Midgard into the depths of nothingness would be too strong a force to fight. Marvelous verdict, so it's no surprise that Cthone, the master of black and chaos magic is a force to be reckoned with. He's definitely someone who cannot be defeated by human superheroes, or at least that would be quite unbelievable. Most they can do is send him back into a slumber or hold him in the dark hold. But destroying or killing him will take a god level expertise. With Wanda Maximoff serving as a major great character in MCU, I would not be surprised if we get to see a rendition of Cthone in the upcoming films. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe.